everything is contributing to the lack of housing. So this is where you live? This is where I live at the moment. That's appalling. That should never happen in a country like Australia. I've been places where there's like hundreds of people lining up. They're the scum of the earth. It pisses me off. I've found my happiness here. I had no happiness in society living in the housing. If they really wanted people not to be homeless, they could have done it. It's pretty what competitive. Country? There's just so many people. We have to bail right now. Australia is facing a housing crisis epidemic. With skyrocketing house and rent prices and a shortage of affordable homes, thousands of Australians have nowhere to live. Rapid population growth, foreign investment and speculative buying are all factors in what's driven up housing costs like no tomorrow, leaving many Australians homeless. The crisis has sparked widespread debate and concern, affecting not just major cities, but also regional areas. All right, guys, welcome to Brisbane, Australia. We have just arrived here this morning from Sydney. We've flown up here because we've found on the news a lot of people having to live in tents as a result of this housing crisis that Australia is currently undergoing. What are your thoughts on the housing crisis, bro? It's pretty sad. Like Upon my research for this video, I saw a lot of people living in tents because they can't afford rent. There's not enough houses. That's not just Brisbane, but Australia wide. Excuse me, mate. Do you know where those people are living under the tents? No idea. Excuse me. Do you know where those people are living in tents? No? Excuse me, sir. Do you know? Oh, get off the road. Do you know where oh, those? Oh, oh, even better. <laughs> Do you know where those people are living in tents? Go to the railway station. Are they there now? I would never clue. I'm 81 years of age. You look good for 81. Don't bullshit. Thank you so much. Bullshit. Take it easy. <laughs> trying to give you a fist. There we go. FTP. <laughs> As we visited the locations where people said the tents would be, we encountered only dead ends. So we walked into the shopping center and unexpectedly bumped into this lady. You know there's a place called Turner's Camp? What's there? There's a lot of homeless people out there. A lot of homeless people there. This might sound strange, but do you mind, can you come with us to show us where to go? This lady agreed to take us to Turner's Camp to introduce us to some homeless individuals living in tents due to the housing crisis. We're driving to a beach right now. We're just following her car at the moment. And she said that she was actually at this beach about two days ago and she saw many, many homeless people that, you know, had to obviously move to the beach, live in tents, due to this housing crisis. We were introduced to a man named James who was willing to share his story of becoming homeless and was nice enough to show us his tent. Where are you from, James? Originally New South Wales. Yeah. And I've been up here about six years, broke yeah. up with my my partner and um, yeah, it's put me into a bit of yeah, a bad spot. And are you currently homeless? I am homeless, yes. You don't look homeless. I dress well. <laughs> yeah, right. How did you become homeless? Well, having to rent through somebody else, I wasn't a screening process. So yeah, I was stuck with someone who was on drugs and psychotic and I just had to move out. It was too stressful. Basically had um, a week and a half to find a place yeah. and just I mean I looked but couldn't find anywhere. So anywhere. you couldn't find a place anywhere? No. I mean there was four four different places to look at but they gave me like ultimatum between other people. So it was gonna take another week and a half for them to get back to me. By then I was already in the tent. Yeah. You live by yourself? Yeah at the moment yeah. Can you show us your tent? Yeah I guess. Yeah let's do it. <laughs> it's really really messy. Kinda of ironic because you're in such a beautiful spot which you'd pay millions of dollars to live in a house on the beach yeah. but then you're living in a tent because you know you can't afford a place to live. Yeah it's depressing and like there's no support. Do you guys ever have to resort to you know catching fish for example? Sure yeah we're fishing every day. Here. Right. and it's saving a lot of money. So this is where you live? This is where I live at the moment. I am wow. going to try and get another tent, got my little camp bed. It's a Come shit show at the moment. No, that's all right, that's all right, that's fine. This wow, is my okay. messy tent. Today I am going to clean it up. That's it's right, just because right. it's been raining so much, I haven't really had a chance to, you know, yep. get it all organised. But yeah, but I'm sleeping, and uh, water comes in there, and I, yeah. So wow, so I can, wow, it's actually flooded in here. And, and how does sort of living here, how does it make you feel, uh, having to wake up and you know have have a home? A little bit depressed, a little bit hopeless. But um, yeah, I'm just lucky, just knowing, um, meeting everyone else is in the same boat here. Like we're all really positive people. Every day is a new day. Just got to deal with the consequences we dealt with. It was sad to see James living in this tent, and our tour guide had some insights to share about this crisis. Mother Earth, it pisses me off. They're all human beings, just like you and I. Of and course. they've lost their work, they've lost their life, they lost their roof. What yeah. are they supposed to do? Yeah, Where yeah, are they yeah. supposed to go? They can't even fucking go to work. We were then introduced to another man living at the camp who wanted to share his opinion on the situation. And his answer was a really interesting one. Yeah, you sure. can see that right behind me. <laughs> they got a bit upset when I tied my camp to the side, you know what I mean? How do you think homelessness has come into society? I won't take a like, negative opinion on the poor homeowner for a start for raising their rent because I'll say during the COVID times, when there was what, how many months, six, seven, eight, nine months, but they didn't have to pay their rent. What about the poor owner? Like he's got his one house trying to raise his family. He wants to set his future up for his, in their world. So what? He's about to lose his home. Interest rates are going up. Society's like inflation of everything's a price. He doesn't want to lose his 
his home or his second investment home. So he has to put his rent up. Yeah? So when society and the price of everything goes up in the world and the inflation and everyone's got to start earning a bigger dollar in the world, well, the poor bloke, don't blame him for putting up his rent. So even though you're homeless yourself, you don't blame the homeowner for doing what he has to do to get well, by himself. Do we want them to be on the street with me? Maybe they can't fend for themselves. So I'm happy to be on the beach living like this. I've found my happiness here. I had no happiness in society living in the houses wow. and, and the way that society lives and their beliefs. I think the biggest thing I took out of that was the fact that James, he looks so normal. Like he looks like a normal guy, but he just happens to be homeless because not just the, the people that are hooked on drugs or that are struggling with alcoholism that are homeless, it's actually regular people like every single one of us. Everything was planned. I reckon from COVID to interest rates, inflation, everything was planned. The government knew that people were going to go homeless and it's all part of the plan. If they really wanted people not to be homeless, they could have done it. It's all part of the agenda. Well, you see it all the time, don't you? You see like predictive programming on The Simpsons and music and you're like, oh, well, that's weird this is happening now because I saw it in a movie 10 years ago. It's like these people at the top are very clever. As we were driving, we spotted some more tents on the side of the road. So we decided to stop and see if there was anyone we could interview. Sorry to disturb you. Did you have to move in here due to the rent prices and the housing prices? Oh, we had to leave the other place. So has the um, housing crisis um, made a lot of people become homeless? Yeah, like it's just outpriced. Just priced out of everybody's reach. Have you been looking for places to rent? No, because there's nothing cheap enough around. So you just can't afford it? Yeah. Do you guys work or? Yeah, myself and my son does. Really? What do you do for work? I'm a security officer and my son works at Coles. Oh wow, and you, and you guys are still homeless? Yeah. Is it because of the demand as well? Well, every house that you look at, you've got about 50 other people. Uh, like there's 48,000 plus people that are homeless. Wow, wow. Oh, she's gonna go grab someone that will potentially be down to answer some questions. That's crazy, wow. Unfortunately, the person in the tent didn't want to be interviewed, but she gave us directions to where many homeless people camp out. We traveled to Brisbane South, where we heard there was a large number of people living in the park in tents. And what we saw there was beyond my imagination. There is just literal like 50 tents all lined up next to each other, just over here. Whoa, there's a lot of them, eh? Bro, they're everywhere. Wow. Tents lined up over there. And then there's more here. Wow. Where? Bro, they're oh. Everywhere. oh my goodness. Oh, even there, look. Oh, bro, they're all here. We couldn't believe the number of tents in the park. I wanted to interview some people to hear their stories, but what happened next was very unexpected. So I wanted to see if you guys would be down to answer a couple. Some of your material. Sure, sure. So we do this sort of stuff, so. Um, yeah, bro, I'm not gonna speak for uh, I'll, I'll, well, I'll tell um, you what, not to worry about. Yeah, dude, if you can't even trust me to hold the phone, like. You no, nah, I'm not. It's, it's not just the guy in the background still having a go at me. Just because I said, let me hold the phone instead of him. I don't let anyone hold my phone. If I don't know you, like, my phone's my phone. All right, guys, we have to bail right now. We have to get out of here. There were some people that were not too happy with us being there. Are you coming? Yeah, 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 yeah. After seeing people living in the tents in Brisbane firsthand, we decided to dig deeper into this issue. So we flew back to Sydney to investigate further. All right, guys, we're just going to an open inspection. A lot of people here and uh, not sure how anyone's going to get above one another for the place, but we'll soon find out. So we're in a place in Newtown, two bedrooms, one bathroom for $8.50 a week. There's about 20 people here so far. It's actually early. It's not even the time that the inspection started, but yeah, as you can see, a lot of people so far. How hard has it been to try and find a place to rent in Sydney? recently i think it's harder and challenging when you go for eastern suburbs places a lot of competition usually yeah 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 i've been to like places where there's like hundreds of people lining up what are you doing here today needed house to rent yep. mine has just come up recently and i've got a two months to find somewhere how hard has it been for you recently to find a place to live there's a lot on the market but yeah. there's a lot of people looking so what are the chances of someone actually securing a house like this today pretty slim because there's a lot of people and what's the most amount of people you've seen at a single inspection yeah probably about 50 something like that two bedroom house i then headed to another open inspection in a middle class area called Randwick to see the high demand with my own eyes and the number of people seeking housing due to this crisis. We just arrived at the apartment. So this one is going for $6.50 a week, one bedroom, one bathroom in Randwick. So not bad. How hard has it been for you to find a place to live? Well, this is a nice place, but it's become very expensive nowadays. So the rents have gone really high last yeah. few years. Yeah. yeah. Have you been looking around for a while? Yeah, I've been looking around for a while. How long have you been looking for? Just two, three months now. Really? That's a long time. It's hard to get the application through. The number of people having a review um, is increased, I would say, yeah. so it's becoming a little harder. It's pretty competitive. Yeah, some of them we haven't even looked in because like there's just so many people. Yeah, but like, like this one especially, right? Yeah. I went to interview Tom Panos, a big time real estate agent known for his appearances on the Block TV show, to ask him in-depth questions about the housing market and what advice he has for people struggling in today's housing climate. What do you think is the reasoning behind the current housing crisis? For Australia is purely immigration. The amount 
of people coming through the airport, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, is just extraordinary. And I think we as a country weren't prepared and ready to house all the people that are coming in. The government hasn't thought, where are these people going to be? What are you going to do? Put them in caravan parks? Put them into tents? Yeah, like, yeah. So speaking of tents, uh, we actually went to an area recently where there are a lot of people that have had to move into tents because they just simply can't find a place to live. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? That's appalling. That should never happen in a country like Australia. No person in Australia should be put in a position to actually have to live under a canvas with a piece of steel. That is unacceptable. That is a serious issue. Do you know right now there is public housing across Sydney that is empty? What role do you think governments have in ensuring affordable housing for people out there? You've got to dangle a carrot to developers. The developers have walked away because the deal doesn't stack up. For a developer to make money, they need to buy land at a particular price. And because of all the building materials and inflation that's gone up, so they're just walking away. And if developers aren't building, there's no accommodation. If there's no accommodation, there is not enough for all the people that are coming through Australia. So I think a state government should dangle the carrot and bring developers back in there. And just final piece of advice out there for those watching that just simply can't find a place to live. The truth of the matter is financially, if you can't afford a place to live, you've either got to look at the money that you're coming in or the money that's going out. That's simple equation, right? There's a lot of granny flats going up in the back of houses. They're like a brand new unit. Listen, I feel for them and I'm, I'm happy I'm not at that age.